Yes. Excellent. Good afternoon, everybody. I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. This is the uh, May 25th, 2017 uh, regular meeting of the Jackson Board of Selectmen. And our first order of business on agenda item number one is to approve the minutes from our previous meeting. We only have one set of minutes to uh, approve today. This is our regular meeting from May 11th. Um, so I will entertain a motion to approve these minutes. I make a motion. I'll second. And did you both get an opportunity to skim through these or read through these? They're not very long. And nope. did, did you find any ends, any, anything you think was missing or uh, should not be contained in the minutes? Very good then. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes as written from our selectmen's meeting from May 11th, say aye. Aye. All right. Very good. Pass around. My old pen. Okay, and uh, no action items for this week. Uh, upcoming meeting dates here for you. Um, our June minutes, or our June meetings, rather, are scheduled for Thursday, June eighth at four p.m. right here in this room, and Thursday, June twenty second at four p.m. here in the, the town office. Uh, July meetings currently scheduled are July thirteenth at four p.m. and July twenty seventh at four p.m. right here in this room. We have our August meetings scheduled out as well, Thursday, August 10th, and Thursday, August 24th. Both start at 4 p.m. right here in this room, and we hope that you will be able to join us for those. Next order of business, agenda item number three, is the first of our two public comment sections. Anybody uh, here have any comments to make uh, at, the, at the moment? Well, oh, come on. <laughs> chirp, 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 chirp. <laughs> we'll move right into the. Uh, oh, there we go. Sure, we do, we do, we do. Asking for comments. When are you going to go to Dundee Road? That's a question. Well, uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we're, we're looking at the budget right now, I will tell you this, and, and we may be uh, putting some more material up there to, to help with that. It's, it's, it's been a while, and we really like the way it turned out last time as far as needing constant grading. So we're, we're taking a look at our paving budget and looking to add more material up there. And once we get those uh, quotes locked in, we'll know where we are with it. But there will be work done on the road regardless of whether there's material added or not this summer. Right. Any other comments? Maybe this spring, yeah. You got a holiday weekend coming up, and the town still hasn't got around to sweep the Fall Hill sidewalk. The Falls? The, the Falls sidewalk? Yeah. yeah. Duly noted. Thank you. I think you want to crack the whip there somewhere. Crack the whip. <laughs> How do you spell whip? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Comments at this point? Very good. We'll move on. Building inspector, and Kevin is not here tonight. He's out doing other town business. Uh, we have two building permits that have come to us, uh, signed off by Kevin. One is for uh, Map V4, Lot 36. This is Donald Pearson at 69 Wilson Road. <coughs> Uh, looking to add a 44 by 26 addition to existing house for a new four-year entry, three-car garage, <coughs> and kitchen, dining, great room, office, sunroom on upper level. So there's a building project for you. Uh, the other one is uh, map V10, lot 106, David McNeil, David and Paula McNeil, and this is at 271 Tin Mine Road. And uh, this is an extension of a previous building permit application, uh, building a uh, 32 by 24 attached garage, main floor living, family room, half bath, laundry, loft exercise room, and full bath. So that's an extension. Uh, other than that, nothing for uh, building permits. Either one of you have any building? Uh, 
permit or building inspector related things to bring up? Okay. Well, I have to start talking slower. <laughs> We're going to be out of agenda items soon. Um, we'll move to agenda item number five, new business. We've got some items under new business to address today. And the first one is an AFLAC presentation. Uh, gentlemen, would you like to sure. come up and join us, Absolutely. or stand, or no, come up. What, what's your what's I'm your sure pleasure? That they're dying to hear about that. Like <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you have our name tags. I have, I have name tags. Stuck in my in my house. Oh, so so yeah, we can definitely bring that in at the end and draw straws. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my name is Jim Bacon. I've been with that like for about seven years now. Great. Um, between Massachusetts and New Hampshire, we, we work with a, a little over 200 towns and cities to provide additional health-related benefits uh, to the employees at no cost to the town. Excellent. Okay. So even though we're a small town, we do normally have nameplates out here. Hi. <laughs> Bob Thompson. And this well, is John Allen. John, nice to meet you. And Dick Bess. Dick Bess, nice to meet you. There are a couple things going on. Here. Yeah. 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 So I don't know if you've, you've already had a presentation in the past for Affleck. I don't want to like you know bore you with any of the details you might already know, but uh, just a quick overview. Um, Affleck doesn't. We're not considered major health insurance, so we don't look to go into these towns and businesses and change or replace anything they already have as far as their core benefits. Um, Affleck works completely opposite of that, where everything that we do is we actually funnel money back into the policyholders' hands if they go through any type of a health event. So if somebody gets sick, if somebody gets hurt. Um, most people these days are dealing with a very uh, high deductible health plan. Uh, hopefully you guys are not, but a lot of people, the average deductible right now is $3,000 for, for uh, an employee and $6,000 for a family. So if somebody gets sick or hurt and they go to the doctors, they, sometimes they don't realize that they're on the, on the, uh, on the hook for that first three grand or 6000 mm -hmm. So Affleck's been doing this for 60 years, way, way before health care reform and Obamacare. Um, and everything, that, like I said, they've done is, is funnel money back to the policyholder. Uh, 60 years in the business, they've never raised their rates on an existing policy holder. So if somebody got these benefits through the town, um, they're, at least they're locked into those rates. They, can, they only have to be with the town for one month, and then they would, be able to, they would own the plans after a month, and then they can bring them wherever they go. So that could be retirement, changing jobs, as long as they have the 30 days, they leave, the plans follow them, they get the same <coughs> discounted group rates, same coverage, nothing changes. Okay. Um, the best thing I will say about Affleck, which to me is most important, um, is the way that Affleck deals with their claims. So if somebody, any of your employees got sick or hurt, we, we go to put a claim in, uh, Affleck now has a one-day pay structure where if we get the plan in and that claim in by uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, somebody wanted to sign up a direct deposit, Affleck would actually direct deposit their claim money into their account by the next day. So they're, they're big on speed, 24 hours is, is, is pretty good to get yeah. the, the turnaround to get somebody's paid on a, on a claim. Mm -hmm. um, types of uh, benefits that we do offer, and again, we're not, I don't know what you have as far as a, a town, so if you may already have some of these, these things, and we're not looking to replace those, but Affleck does a uh, dental plan, we do a vision plan, we do an accident plan that covers somebody for 24-7 coverage on injuries, and all these things are on and off the job, doesn't matter where they are. Um, there is a uh, critical illness like a cancer plan that would cover somebody from obviously some uh, a diagnosis of something a little more serious. Um, and we also have a, a hospital plan that would protect somebody just for going to the hospital for any reason. So there's a number of different plans. We just do, it's like an a la carte. So we usually come in and do a 15, 20 minute presentation just to explain the benefit options and how they work. It's voluntary, so if somebody is interested, then they can enroll. If they're not, that's fine too. We just, we just present the information, educate them on how it works and, and, and how they would put a claim in, and the rest is up to them. Um, so those are the different types of, of benefits that, that we do offer. Uh, if, if you did allow the employees to look at it, the only involvement the, the town would get involved in would be to say, yes, I'll let them look at it. If they want to pay for it, they can go ahead and pay for it on the, for their own coverage. Will allow them to do, allow them to do it through a payroll uh, slot, a payroll deduction. That's it. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if we do the payroll deduction, then we, most of our plans can be uh, done on a pre-tax basis, just like health insurance is. 
Um, some of the things wouldn't be, but most of the plans could be set up on a pre-tax basis, which would save save the employees uh, some money. On no, no cost to the town at all. No cost to the town. They, so all it would be is a payroll deduction, and they somebody in the town would send that to AFAC on a, on a monthly basis, mm -hmm. and that would be it. Everything else comes down to us as far as the enrollments, the education, helping with the claims. All that comes back down to, to Ross and myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then your your. You would just be sending that to Alpha on And we we always we're always building we build in arrears just so you know so there's never a dime coming out of the the town's account uh, because say let's say the plans went live on July first okay they would do um, weekly deductions or biweekly whatever however you guys get paid here in the month of July and Alpha wouldn't need that until uh, August fifteenth hmm. so it's not you're never fronting the money for their coverage it's always coming out of uh, out of their paycheck mm -hmm. if, they, if they choose to to do that so very good. Um, and it would be up to the employee to choose, you know, dental, one employee could have dental vision and some of the other benefits and another employee could choose not to do that and then you yes, would absolutely. Uh, basically determine their rate and that's what would come out of their check. That's absolutely right. And uh, the only rate that would have to be um, calculated would be a short-term disability policy because we do short-term disability. It's all based on that person's income. Mm -hmm. So that's the only rate they will not have. Okay. Everybody else is going to get the same rate. The dental is the same for everybody. The accident is the same for everybody. Um, hospital is the same. So everybody else would have that same rate for the state of uh, New Hampshire. And these are full-time employees only? No. So it's full-time, part-time, and even even 1099. AFLAC doesn't really, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter to them as long as they were employed, even if it's seasonal, seasonal employees, part-time employees, 1099s, W-2s. And so what you'd be looking for for us was for us to coordinate a time for you to come in and present to the staff that, that would be interesting. That is correct. Yes, that would be the only thing that we would require. And we usually you know, bring in like a lunch. We do a lunch and learn. Or we do, we do uh, you know, for the police and the fire, we know that they have a very, you know, different schedule. So, you know, it's our job to make it as convenient for all of your employees as possible. So, if you know, if we come in at second shift in the middle of the night to present the information, that's what we have to do. That's mm -hmm. we're, we're used to doing that. Mm -hmm. So whatever, we don't, we realize that you guys are trying to run a town here. We're not looking to shut the whole thing down just to hear about benefits. So we will make ourselves available for whatever you say is the best uh, for your for your different departments. Okay. Yeah. John, questions? Um, no, I can maybe just you know, pass the word around to so who might, might be interested. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Fair enough. So, can you reach out? I mean, obviously, a lot of different departments, library, whoever, and uh, see if we can coordinate a time that works best for everyone. Um, My guess is you probably have two separate meetings: the fire department meeting and then the rest of the town. That, if you think that's the best way, yeah, usually that's the case in the towns. We usually do the fire, the police is separate, and then well, sometimes the we have police to would come in here with everyone else. Just the fire have like every. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday, every other Tuesday, yeah. every other Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So then I was going to say we could right. back off of something you already have established as far mm -hmm. as you know mandatory meetings or, or yeah. whatever we get together. Does Julie have your contact information? I have it right here. Okay. So and I have a little bit of guidelines of what we just talked about, the breakdown of all the plans, great. and my cards right in there as well. So. Sounds great. And you'll be bringing. One of those for everybody that attends when we actually yes. have a meeting. Yes, it's exactly right. So we do just a fifteen-minute presentation, and then at the end we pass out all these folders with all the benefits in there, yeah. and then they go home, they talk to their significant others, their spouses, and if they come back, we come back two days later. If they decide that they want to enroll, you just say, "Hey, Jim and Ross are in the. They're going to be in the room for that block of time. Go see them if you'd like to enroll." Okay, great. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Excellent. All Sounds right. good. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, you for it. coming. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks, Ross. Thank you. Thank you. It's coming to the Pine Festival on Sunday. <laughs> You've got a fleck, right, Hank? Uh, no. Oh. How come your name was next to the. He, he set it up. Oh, oh okay. you set it up. Well, thank yeah. you for, thank you for doing coordinating that. that. Excellent. You'll have to make sure you're at the meeting when it gets scheduled. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Next uh, order of business is uh, we have a report of a cut, and this is for uh, a cut made by uh, our proposed timber tax levy for Rick Davis, R1, Box 20, 8 Dundee Road, Jackson, New Hampshire, and uh, it's got everything on here. Either one of you want to take a closer look at anything? That's pretty common. Uh, pretty sum common. is for five hundred thirty-one dollars nineteen cents. I'll uh, entertain a motion to approve this uh, timber tax levy. 
I'll make that motion. And I'll second. Very good. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Two pages. Two pages. Two pages. Two pages. Oh, we've got a pink and a blue. We've got a pink and a blue. Upside down, wrong side, the left piece. I think that would work out well now. Then we're going to deal with the assholes. We have a microphone system too. Wow. Yeah, did you sign two pages? Nope. Talk to me like a hawk, man. I tell you. Worse than my wife. <laughs> my wife wanted to, huh? Oh, Sharp as a tack. Talking to the microphone. <laughs> Sharp as a tack. Right. Mm. Eliminates the chase. Yes. Next. Uh, Okay, next up is uh, the Jackson representative for the uh, Mount Washington Valley Economic Council. We have a one-year appointment here to consider um, for, uh, to reappoint Scott Badger for another year. Apparently he is uh, willing and there's an opening and so uh, entertain a motion to reappoint <coughs> Scott for another one-year term for the uh, Mount Washington Valley Economic Council. So moved. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, thank you, Scott, for stepping up to uh, serve another term. Next order of business is 5D, Class 6 Road Waiver. And uh, we had uh, an uh, opportunity to take a look at our Class 6 Road Waiver and didn't really find anything that we felt applied. We have a, uh, uh, a road waiver here uh, waiving us of municipal liability for... Uh, Permit uh, building permit application for Carrie McLean Burkett. This is going to be up on Green Hill Road somewhere, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we needed to have something in place on that and contacted our uh, town attorney and uh, he put together the, uh, the waiver of municipal liability that would protect us. And so um, it's got nine different conditions to it. Have you guys had a chance yes, to I did. take a look at this? That. Any thoughts about it? Uh, um, I know that uh, Peter made some suggestions there that uh, I think that were already made, corrections were already made in there, right? Right. And so that was yeah, right. good to me. Okay. Pretty thorough. Excellent. And uh, Dick, any input? I know you're most familiar with this. No, um, I'm happy. I think it's actually it's more extensive than I was thinking, but I think it covers everything that we need to. And for everybody else, it's just a disclaimer that the town won't maintain the road. Uh, we'll try to help. We'll try to maintain it for emergency vehicles, um, a minimal, but we're not going to maintain the road. But it's to help people uh, who either live have a house or our building like uh, this is for somebody who wants to build a house on off of a class six road. Yeah. So they can't come back and say, "Well, you didn't get the fire truck here, and our house burned down." Well, I'm sorry, but you know, we would try to help. And it, it is uh, it, yeah, providing that uh, permission and uh, at the same time not assuming responsibility for uh, snow plowing, liability of damages resulting from the use, etc. So. Any input? There was uh, some mention of um, repairs to the road that were necessary from time to time by the owner. Uh, 
Uh, well, let's see here. What, number four, you think? I, think I can't remember exactly. Owner does hereby forever release and discharge the town, its officers, agents, and employees from the obligation of maintaining Iron Mountain Road and from any claim of any nature, whether in tort or otherwise, which owner might have against the town for any loss or damage, including those incurred through failure to provide municipal services, including police, fire, and ambulance services arising out of the condition of the roadway from the point wherein the Iron Mountain Road is a Class 6 highway. So, yeah, agreeing to those conditions allows us to uh, um, a, a, approve uh, a, a building uh, permit up on that Class 6 road. So. Mm -hmm. Um, excellent. Well, I think we're all clear on this then, so I'll entertain a motion to uh, to sign off and approve on the waiver of municipal liability for Class 6 highway building permit. I'll make that motion. No. Second. All right. Uh, anything more to add, either one of you, Dick or John? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. And we have a spot here to sign. Which Are we going to sign our end now and then have Carrie sign it later in front of a notary? We don't. Yeah, I'd hold off on the signature yeah, right now, yeah. but, but you can. We need a notary. Right. We've approved the form. Okay, right. right. Excellent. <clears throat> Very good. Thank you. Next up, we have. Uh, we are going to announce that we have a planning board resignation um, that's been um, submitted to the town. From Jason Bagley, uh, Jackson Planning Board. Dear Jackson Planning Board members, please accept this letter as my notice of resignation, effective May 15th, 2017. Thank you for the opportunity to work for such an outstanding group. It's been a great pleasure working with you and representing the town of Jackson. Had to move to Bartlett because my house is going up for sale in the market. The closest house I could find was in Bartlett for my family and me. Jackson's a great town. I'll miss it. I'll still be on Jackson Fire. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be a member of the planning board. Sincerely, Jason Bagley. So I will um, entertain a uh, motion uh, with regret to accept this letter of resignation from Jason Bagley. So moved. Second. All those in favor of accepting the letter of resignation, say aye. 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 Very good. And. Uh, Julie, if we could maybe get a, a letter thanking Jason for his <coughs> services out, I think that'd be great. Uh, thank him for staying on the fire department and too. Thank him for yeah. yeah, agreeing to continue to serve on as a Jackson uh, on the Jackson Fire Department. That would be great. We have another extended liquor license request, and this comes from uh, Whitney's again, and, and they had uh, requested a liquor license uh, extension. Uh, that did not include a date. That they requested for only one wedding, and this was one they realized they forgot to ask for. And there were actually two. So same conditions apply, but this is going to extend their license out uh, for uh, the second wedding that they forgot to put in on the first one. This is for Saturday, June 3rd, 2017. So uh, we'll need to approve this uh, extension request. Uh, um, any any questions, John or Dick? So I'll go ahead and entertain a motion to extend the liquor license request from the Whitney's Inn to include a wedding being held there on Saturday, June third. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Very good. to uh, 5G under new business. North Country Angler request from new owners. North Country Angler is under new ownership. New owner's name is Steve Angers. Uh, no L in there. But uh, uh, basically he is introducing himself to the town as the, the new owner of North Country Angler. And uh, he wants to continue <coughs> on in the spirit of cooperation with the partnership that currently exists where uh, North Country Angler has traditionally um, stocked the pond um, 
and then in return they have had the opportunity to um, uh, teach uh, some of their customers how to fly fish on the pond. Uh, just wanted to introduce himself to the town and uh, and solidify that working relationship. John, Dick, any uh, uh, kids still able to fish the pond? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't affect that. Doesn't impact anything else that uh, we use for the pond. I guess as long as they don't feed the geese, we're happy with it. Boy, I think there's been a lot less geese this year. Oh, it's the owl. Who? I know it is. Who? It's the, oh, I didn't know the owl had a name. Okay. Who? Who? Turn that thing off. <laughs> It's getting cheesy up here. No, okay. Well, that's great. So um, I don't know that we need to make a formal motion or anything, but no. uh, we, we have no problem here in the spirit no. of cooperation continuing on with that relationship. So uh, let, let Mr. Angers know. Maybe it's Angers with a soft G. I don't know. But at any rate, that's, uh, thank him for uh, uh, notifying us of the change of ownership. We look to continue to work with him. That's fun. Uh, nothing under old business, John or, or Dick. Do you have anything uh, in the way of old business? Nope. No. All right. Uh, uh, next uh, and final uh, opportunity for public comment. Any other public comments? We just have a question. Um, are minutes available for the last couple of meetings? I missed them. Yeah. Where, yeah. Where, where are they available? I think there's well, there, a there's copy on the board. board that um, we post them on. There's a website where you can print them off, or you can ask on the Jackson for, website. Uh-huh, okay. Or you can ask okay. for a copy. They don't go on e-news anymore. Uh, they do go out to e-news as well. Yeah. No, because someone called me and they yeah. haven't seen them. Oh, okay. I'm going to check. Julie normally sends them. That's why I was missing. Any other comments? Very good. Well, Super. hearing none and seeing that. Uh, hey, uh, Stan's got somewhere to go. He's looking at his watch over there. It's like, <laughs> I should have talked slower then, huh? Okay. Well, it's a, it's a um, slow time of the year, I guess, for uh, Selectman's business. But at any rate, uh, uh, we're, we're happy you were able to join us this afternoon. And uh, I will then, hearing no other comments or business, entertain a motion to adjourn. I would happily make that motion. <laughs> I will second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Once again, everybody, thanks for coming. Thank you.